after 10 agonizing years of searching. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. And at least four alleged confessions. He was watching her breathe out her last breath. The man long suspected of killing Kara Kopetsky and Jessica Runyon is finally charged with their murders. It should have never, ever happened. Last year, we first brought you Kara's story. She was last seen more than 10 years ago, leaving school early. Phone records reveal it was six minutes after a call from her ex-boyfriend, Kyler Eust. Days earlier, the Belton, Missouri teen had filed a protection order against him after he allegedly abducted her from work and threatened to slit her throat. Things got a little physical, and the next thing he knew is she wasn't breathing. Prosecutors now say Caitlin Ferris is one of several people to whom Kyler would eventually confess, explaining how and why he killed Kara. She basically explained to him that she didn't want to be with him anymore, and he said he kind of just freaked out. Private detective Marlene Rockwell recorded another one of Kyler's girlfriends talking about his confession. He's admitted to it to me. He told me he killed her. And he said, I've seen girls' faces turn purple. Have you ever seen the wife leave someone's eyes? And I got really scared at that point. In newly released court documents, prosecutors say in 2010, one of Kyler's bandmates was the first to go to police with news of a confession. He told them Kyler said he was angry with Kara because she wouldn't love him, and he didn't want her to love someone else. I want the family to get some type of resolution, but at the same time, I want it the right way. Police Lieutenant Brad Swanson, during our first interview on the Kopetsky case, explaining why there hadn't been an arrest despite the alleged confessions. Whoever did this, I will get charged someday, and when that get charge gets filed, it will stick. I promise. But the very night that story aired, prosecutors say Kyler killed again. It was September 2016. Jessica Runyon's vanishes after leaving a party with Kyler a friend of her boyfriend. John and Jamie Runyons were about to experience the same nightmare as Rhonda and Jim Beckford. The minute they said his name, I knew it wasn't a good thing. But unlike in Cara's case, police had physical evidence to work with. Jessica's burned out Chevy Equinox was found the day after she vanished. Kyler had confessed yet again this time to a roommate. Police say that roommate was also there when Kyler burned Jessica's car. Kyler Eust was arrested with burns on his hands and face for knowingly burning a vehicle. In an eerie twist, when Crime Watch Daily tried tracking down Kyler at his grandfather's house for our original story, an Equinox identical to Jessica's was in his grandfather's driveway. A young woman came to the door but never came outside. We can't be certain it was Jessica, but if it was, did she know Kyler had allegedly confessed to killing a girl? Her mother, Jamie, certainly did not. When Jessica went missing, I went to the police station and um, I didn't know about Kyler. I never knew Jessica had any connection with Kyler. The first thing I saw when I Googled him was Kara's name. The Runyons would need Kara's parents for support as the days turned to months. And the search for both of their daughters dragged on. Every time I'm down, they're right there. And we're just a great support system, and they've been amazing. Then finally, 10 years after Kara Kapetsky vanished, and seven months after Jessica Runyons met the same fate, their remains were found. They say, you know, the moment you feel like you're going to give up is the moment you find answers. A man hunting mushrooms made the gruesome discovery. Just walking down the fence row there and uh, looking for on the ground for mushrooms and seeing a reflection over there and 15, 20 yards on the other side of the fence was a skull. Not one, but two skulls. Lab tests quickly identified one as Jessica Runyon's. I was numb. And I did my best to try to comfort her. Because the second skull was much older, it would take longer to identify. 
But Rhonda always knew what the outcome would be. We feel in our heart and in our, our gut that it's Cara. DNA tests did eventually confirm they were right. It's the hardest thing anybody will ever have to go through. The skulls were found in an area Kyler used likely knew well. He has a childhood friend who he spent a lot of time with, whose farm is right around the corner from here. Two Missouri mothers brought together by heartbreak. We're in a group that nobody should ever be in. Now stand together, united in the pursuit of one paramount goal. Focus is just justice for our girls. On the day prosecutors charged Kyler in their daughter's murders, the two mothers had one simple message of gratitude. We just want to thank the whole community, you know, all of our family and friends for, for being with all of us. And we want to thank you guys because you guys have been our girls' voice. Last week, the families of both girls were in court as Kyler pleaded not guilty to two counts of first-degree murder and two counts of abandonment of a corpse. I'm just ready to get this thing over with. Sentiments no doubt shared by the parents of Kara Kopetsky. Kyler will be back in court at the end of December. Prosecutors haven't said if they'll seek the death penalty. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.